With the discovery of water on the moon and distant planets, the possibility of colonization suddenly becomes much more viable. Oxygen can be extracted from the water to be used in domed habitats on planets with minimal atmosphere. And water is one of the principal ingredients of rocket fuel. This find increases the possibility of unlimited treks across the stars. We've had reports to the effect that the Viking equipment will never determine positively whether or not there's life on Mars. Can you set us straight on this? Well, my own view is it's uh, much too soon to decide whether we will have a definitive answer. Uh, it may be that there is uh, an exotic biology on Mars. It may be that there's an exotic chemistry which looks a little bit like biology. There's a number of experiments to be done. They might decide the issue, they might not. But either way, Viking has been a biological success because uh, the chemical explanation means that there is a kind of chemistry in the Martian surface which simulates some of the steps of chemistry in biology. We would learn something important about the origin of life. In October 1988, the Soviet Union sends two unmanned spacecraft, Phobos 1 and 2, named for one of the Martian moons, to study the red planet. Phobos 1 is lost while on its way to Mars. But Phobos 2 arrives to orbit Mars and immediately sends images back to Earth. On March 1, 1989, pictures of this unusual grid are received. The grid, here in the upper right, is shot both in the optical range and in the infrared range. Later, they are merged into this composite overlay. On March 26, Phobos 2 sends these images to Earth, taken just south of the equator. An unexplained elliptical shape appears. This shadow actually appeared all of a sudden. Why am I calling it the shadow? Because you can see things through it. This elliptical shadow, then, is it in Mars' atmosphere or on the planet's surface? One thing is for sure. This something is not positioned horizontally. Well, to me, it looks like a rocket taking off from the surface of Mars and leaving a trail behind. Well, if you'd want to fantasize, it could be interpreted that way, too. Now, we think we ought to look at the real circumstances that have caused that trail, even though they haven't yet been fully clarified. That's more likely to be the shadow of some object, since surface elements can be seen through it. How long will it take to process all of the information to get more or less objective scientific results, rather than fantastic ones? Come back in a week. One week later, no details are given. Then, unexpectedly, this report. Last year, the Soviets launched two spacecraft to the planet, both named after the Martian moon, Phobos. Their mission was to photograph Mars and land probes on its moon. One was accidentally switched off by a mission operator. But the second reached Mars and transmitted pictures that are still puzzling Soviet scientists. As it swung over the equator, it took pictures from a height of 6,000 kilometers. This is an infrared photograph. It shows differences in temperature. The dark patches are colder. This section covers 600 kilometers. It shows objects down to the size of two kilometers. It's the most detailed infrared picture of the planet's surface. We have some very, very thin lines on the surface of Mars in the infrared, which means it's heat. I mean, it's not heat. You can see it through close if you want to do. These have a resolution, these have a width, I would guess, of three or four kilometers wide. You know, that's the question of what it is. I certainly don't know. Um, the Russians aren't telling us. Scientists are also puzzled by this shadow pictured on the surface of Mars by both optical and heat-seeking cameras. They're convinced it's a shadow because they can see objects on the surface beneath. But a shadow of what? Finally, there's the mystery of the vanishing spacecraft. The Russians have yet to release the last picture transmitted by Phobos before it lost contact with ground control. But the Russians have said that it shows an object coming towards the spacecraft, an object which, in their words, should not have been there. The spacecraft was circling Mars, coming into the same orbit as the moons of Mars. And the last picture, about they got halfway through it, and they saw something there which shouldn't be there. Professor Kapitza makes the joke that it's Martian people. British scientists will be able to judge for themselves when the Soviets bring their pictures to a conference at Exeter next month. Because, of course, there must be a sensible explanation, mustn't there? The Russians do not bring any pictures to the Exeter conference. How does the Russian Space Agency explain the spacecraft's destruction or disappearance? It does take a minimum of precision criteria to obtain on the image these spots, which uh, some would like to call flying saucers. 
that appeared within the visual field of the infrared range. It must be pointed out that the flying saucer version is not ours. Actually, at first we were saying that there was no flying saucer, that surely all that we saw could be explained in understandable, natural and physical terms. One possibility could easily be that a small meteorite, a small bit of rock, was in the same orbit as Phobos and hit it. In an exclusive interview conducted in October 1990 in Moscow, Professor Lev Mukin of the Soviet Space Research Institute discredits the meteorite theory. There were attempts to hypothesize that there had been a collision between the space probe, which was then orbiting Mars in alignment with the orbit of Mars Moonlet, and strands of dust surrounding the moon Phobos itself. But some fairly accurate computations made by several organizations and by our institute as well have shown that this assumption is totally baseless. If not meteorite or debris, then what could possibly explain the mishap? A long silence follows. Then in December 1991, Marina Popovich, former cosmonaut trainee and retired Air Force colonel, holds a surprise press conference at the Russian consulate in San Francisco. She unearths the mysterious last photograph taken by Phobos. There is a strange shape in the foreground. Colonel Popovich refers to this as an unidentified flying object, a UFO. The object is juxtaposed against what appears to be the planet's tiny moonlet, Phobos, for which the craft is named. But how is the mysterious shadow explained? The Russians say it is a shadow of some object on, or just above, the Martian surface. Upon further examination in April 1992, when all of the related photographs are compared side by side, scientists reach the conclusion that the shadow is actually moving. If Mars was indeed the site of a space base in antiquity, could the failure of these Soviet space missions be attributed to some sort of alien intervention? Could the ancient space base have been reactivated? So the mystery remains, what caused the spacecraft to destabilize? Was it a malfunction or was there an outside cause, perhaps an impact? The question that arises is indeed a simple one. Was the spacecraft Phobos 2 hit by something that put it out of commission? The circumstances in which Phobos 2 was lost suggest that someone might be back on Mars, someone ready to knock out what to them is an alien spacecraft.